All right, the important thing um, in these examples, there, there, there's, two, there's two important things in these examples. And in, in essence, it's going to be me, me saying everything's important. So um, take it for what it's worth. But I do want to point out that, that when you look at these examples, there's a specific code to do whatever the task is. And that's important. But probably more important are sort of the general things that you can take and extend to other labs and other assignments. All right? And we talked about some of these uh, before. Um, for example, how the class, that's the coding class, connects to the elements in the GUI, you know, with that find control, find view, whatever it is, all right, through that method. That's important because regardless of what specific assignment we're going over, um, you're going you're gonna to do that in virtually every, every program that you write. So it's important to understand that. It's important to understand how the controls on the page connect to the code uh, in the sense of having event handlers and how event handlers work and all that. So those are some of the higher level issues that, yeah, we want to make sure we understand the guts of the code, but we also want to make sure we understand the code in, in general terms and, and what we're going to take from this and apply it to all the other uh, applications that, that we're working on. In this one, we of course review how we refer to elements on our GUI. We, 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 you know, we find view uh, and, and find the, the buttons and the text boxes and so on. So we do that again. We attach event handlers to particular controls or particular views. So we do that again. The one thing that's new in this case that we're going to apply in other places is we are um, making our GUI dynamic by inflating something, all right? In this case, what we have in our, in our Twitter search application is we have a set of buttons, and we're going to have one of those for every search that we enter, all right? So the GUI starts off with just an empty table row. As we go through and add searches for it, our GUI changes. We get buttons added. All right, and those buttons get added through, quote, inflating an XML file. In other words, the XML file has a description of what needs to be added, and the act of inflating actually just goes ahead and, and does it and makes it and creates those objects on the page. So let's go over this. We went through some, some test cases um, or use cases last time, we, or we talked about use cases and test cases, and we went through the one that is the um, adding of a new search into our, our Twitter search application. All right. Um, we're going to quickly go through that, and then we'll go and we'll look at some other use cases. Let me pull out the device to refresh your memory. The way this works is ah, I don't have it on this one, so let's go and run it. guy works is the use case that we considered was this.
application loads. We have a couple of text boxes for a query and for a tag for our query. We can put something in both of these. We click save and we then get a button for each of those. Alright, um, you get a button, we actually get two buttons, one that will actually go and perform the search that I typed in, and one that will allow us to edit the, the terms of the search. Alright, let's go through and let's walk through very quickly this use case and we'll start looking at some other use case we're considering again is we're starting off with a fresh list. There, there's nothing on the list. That will ignore, that will allow us to ignore um, the saving of uh, or the, the integrating of the, the new um, stuff with, with the old stuff. Alright, so here's our activity. We set our view that effectively inflates our main XML file and creates our view. We're going to ignore that for now. All right. We're getting a pointer to this area, which is where we're going to put the buttons. All right. We get a pointer to the two text boxes. We get a pointer to the button. But we don't define that as an, as an instance variable because the only thing we're interested in doing with that button is attaching an event handler to it. Alright? So we're not, we don't need a pointer to that button throughout our class. That event handler, there's actually a couple event handlers here, look like this and they have specific code for what happens when you click save. Other than the, the, the save searches, which we'll talk about in our next use case, does anyone have questions about this chunk of code that we have here? We're pointing to different things on the page, we're setting some event handlers. All right. User enters something in and clicks save. That, of course, fires off the onClick method of that button save listener, which does some validation, make sure that, that there's a, a something entered in both places. Calls this make tag method and blanks out the, the two text boxes. Again, notice that this is... Um, that this code is thin. There's not a lot of processing here. Again, your event handlers typically you want to make thin. You want to have them call other things to, to, to get the job done. I will just mention this one. We won't cover through this scenario in class, but the validation use case of where someone tries to save something and there not being anything valid in there, it pops up a little dialog or an alert box that you have to close. That's handled by this code here. And effectively, what we're doing is, is that highlighted section of code is the section that makes an alert. All right. That one I'll, I'll, I'll trust for you to review on your own. All right, we make the tag, we blank it out, we hide the keyboard. That make tag function goes in and goes and puts the stuff that we entered into our shared preferences. Effectively, it's remembering it for next time. Let's look up the shared preference class 
and let's find out something about the shared preference class. If you notice, we created a instance variable for shared preferences. Let's look at that. Shared preferences is a mechanism by which we can save some simple data. Okay? In this case, we're saving essentially two arrays of data. Right? We're saving a um, we're saving a, a, a set of ordered pairs of data. We're saving a, a tag name and we're saving a, a, a tag search string. All right. If we were saving something more complicated, we can use a SQLite database, which we'll talk about later on in the term. But this is just for saving some very basic stuff. Uh, you know, if you think about like application preferences is a good thing to save here, right? Application preferences aren't things that are terribly complicated in structure. It's just a list of stuff. All right. So the same idea is here. Let's look at, at some of the methods on this. In essence, what this is, is this is an ordered, a, a set of ordered pairs where you have a key and you have a value. So notice there's a get boolean, which allows us to pull things out of the shared preference, allows us to pull um, a, a, uh, a boolean. And we pass it a key, and so on. So shared preferences are a simple way of saving data. You should get used to looking at this Java docs for um, the classes in Android. That's where you find out really uh, what the, the class consists of and everything about the class. In this case, when we're saving that save preference, We are, and again, that saved, that saved or shared preferences is accessed via an editor. All right, that's an editor is just a mechanism that allows us to update it. And we put a string value into the shared preferences by having a key and a value. So let's say I wanted a shared preference for my name, for the user's name. Maybe there's a text box that says enter your name to sort of customize it. And user types in Mike, and it gets saved into their shared preferences. When I say this is an ordered pair, what I mean is this. The save preferences has a key. It's going to be a string. And it has a value, which could be any number of different types. Could be a string, a boolean. Etc. So if we store, if we want to store a user's name in the shared preference table, the key would probably be something like name, and the value would be the value for that attribute. So we have the name of the attribute in the key field, the value in the value field. If we had someone's email address, we would have email as the key, and the value be whatever the value is for that person. 
Later on in our application, then, we can ask for the string that has a key of email. And it will pull that one out. All right? So we can store it in the save preferences, and then we can pull it back out of the save preferences. Now, how are we using the save preferences in this example? We're saving as the key the tag that we enter in. And the value is the actual query. So, I typed in my tag as being Android, so that's what gets saved as the key. The value associated with that key, in this case, is the full word Android development. So it's like an array, all right, it's like one or two arrays, I guess, depending on how you score it. The difference being that instead of having a numeric value for the key, the subscript of an array, you have a, 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 a name for uh, the, 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 uh, the key or the subscript. So instead of asking for element sub zero, you ask for the element that's associated with name or that's associated with Android or whatever. So that's what we're doing in these lines of code. This being a framework, there are classes to do a lot of this stuff. So we don't have to custom code the, the instructions to add it to the save preferences. There's a, uh, or shared preferences rather. There's a shared preferences editor class that allows us to go and maintain the shared preferences. And so what we're doing here is, we are creating an instance of that editor. This editor is going to belong to our save searches. We're putting that string, all right? We're putting a string value in there where the key is the name of the tag and the value is the query itself. And then we're saying go ahead and apply. So make it so. So now we save that uh, in the shared preferences. So, when we go and we add a tag, we give it the query and the tag we want, it goes and adds it in this manner to the shared preferences. Now, all of our tags and queries are in that shared preferences class. All right? This particular use case, we're talking about the first time. So, this is the only one in there. All right? We then call refresh buttons tag to add a new button for this tag. And what refresh buttons does is, is It looks to find where that tag that we entered is in the shared preferences. We know it's in there, right, because we just added it, added it there. All right. It finds where it belongs and what element of, of that, um, what element of our shape, save preferences that it is. It then takes that to know where to put the buttons, all right? So in other words, if, if we added something, if we had two elements previously, and we added something in that was alphabetically between them, it would be in position one, right? The first element would be in position zero, the new one we added would be in position one, and the other one would be in position two. This binary sort and looking for that value, what that does is that searches through the shared preferences to find where we stuffed it. Because where we stuffed it, um, after we sorted it, um, 
after we sort the shared preferences, the position that it's in is going to dictate where we want to put the buttons. All right. The shared preferences really you can think of as being is not really saved in a particular order because it's the name of the tag and the query. After we sort it though, which is what we do here, and we do a binary search, that will tell us what position that tag is in. And that will tell us where we want to create our new set of buttons. So what do we do? We create our new set of buttons by calling make tag GUI and give it the new tag and give it the position that we want it in. All right, make tag GUI then goes and here's where we inflate that XML file to create our new table row. We get pointers to the different buttons. We set our listeners on those buttons and then we go and add that new table row to the query table, which is this inner table here. All right, so that's our use case for this first example. The key points of this is that when we save it, first adds it to the, to the shared preferences, then goes and calls a method to find out what position it's in alphabetically and goes and creates a button in that position uh, in that table row uh, amidst the, the uh, within the query table. All right. Let's look at the clear um, method. All right. The clear buttons simply goes in It verifies that the user indeed wants to go and do it by putting up an alert. That's what this code is. If they click the button that says yes they want to do it, we go in and we do two things. We clear out all the buttons and we remove all the shared preferences. This is a method that clears out the buttons and all it does is it goes into that table and removes all views. So in this case, it removes all the table rows from that table. We then execute this snippet of code, which goes and effectively gets rid of all the shared preferences. So it clears out the shared preferences. Remember, in this application, we have two things that we're keeping in sync through our program. We have our shared preferences, which is sort of the persistent aspect of it that's going to get saved and it's going to come back the next time I run this app. And then we have the GUI, which is showing the buttons and showing the stuff that, that we've, we've entered into query um, already. All right? Now, um, the thing to keep in mind with this is we're keeping those in sync. So everything we do, we need to do to both places. When we saved it, we added it to the shared preferences, and then we went and we added it to the GUI. Now that we're clearing it, we clear out the shared preferences and clear out the GUI. Any questions on that piece of it? All right. Let's look at what happens if we add one and it's already there, and one, and there are, not that one's already there, but there are other sh things in the shared preferences file. The difference would be this refresh buttons, when we sorted this and did our binary search, the very first tag that we enter, of course the binary search is going to be zero, right? Because that's the first element. 
Now it's going to find for our new tag alphabetically where it fits in that list. So it might be in position 0 if it's the first alphabetical. It might be in position 10 if it's the 11th element on the list, or it could be anywhere in between. Once we find it in the array, we then use that index to tell this make tag GUI method where to put that table row, where to insert that table row. All right. We're adding, here we're adding that row, that table row, which we inflated from our XML file and we set the properties to. Here we are adding it in the position that's represented by the index. And that position represents alphabetically where that new tag we've, we've added in lives. All right, next scenario. What if we click the actual tag button itself that indicates that we want to go and do a search, right? So it needs to go out and run the particular search that we've entered in. How does that work? Well, Where does the event handler for that button get set? Where does the event handler for this button get set? It gets set when we create the GUI, when we add this new button to the list. Well, where do we add this new button to the list of buttons? We do that in the make tag GUI. All right. That's the method that goes and inflates our XML button, or our XML file, to actually create the objects that eventually we're going to add to that table. If we notice here, here is where we set the listener for that new button that we've added. All right. So for every button that we add, for every tag button that we add, we set the listener to query button listener. For the edit button, we set it to edit button listener. So for every one of these that gets added, this one, the listener is the query button listener. This one is the edit button listener for all these. All right. So when we click any of these buttons, when we click this one, the edit list, I'm sorry, the query listener kicks in. When we click this one, the edit listener goes in. Let's first look at the um, edit listener. I'm sorry, the query listener. button listener, notice what this does. Again, we're doing some casting here. All right. Let's break down this statement because it's important that we understand this. We have a button that has a tag name associated with it, Android, all right? And then we have edit. This is associated with the query listener, the query button listener. And there's an on-click event on this object that accepts as an argument a view that it calls V. Okay? 